2TC or 2 Tower Chimps is an achievement in Balloons Tower Defense 6 where you have to complete an entire Chimps game with only 2 towers. And today we're going to be doing this achievement with the Absolute Zero with Top Path and Churchill in his Santa skin. Santa Sleigh Bell skin. Now let us commence this wonderful endeavor. And we're going to get Enhanced Freeze first so that we can attack faster, which is going to be necessary so that we can get enough money in order to place down sleigh bells as soon as possible. This might be a hot map, but it is theoretically the best map for a 2TC with the ice tower because of this small square here being very ideal for any pots for the ice tower because of well how the ice tower works. A winter themed two tower chimps on a summery map whilst it's for halloween season yeah <laughs> how many more seasonal things can you put within one map to make it really really like what the hell is going on and what season is this we've got cold snap ready for round 24 and also so that the ice tower can pop leads but we're gonna have ourselves a particular weakness in this run and that is zebra balloons because zebras are immune to both the cold and explosives which means the only way by default in which we can pop zebra balloons is with Churchill's machine gun attack. Here we go, there's zebra balloons. So we have armor piercing shells, but for some guaranteed pops there, uh, we would need the machine gun. But obviously we don't need that right about now, but we will do at some point later on. But then again, it's going to level up to level five anyway. So we're going to get by default anyway. So that's all good. 26 nah we're all about about default leveling up until we get absolute zero but speaking of absolute zero let's get tier three of the ice tower ah do we get ourselves some binoculars so that churchill can attack them or shall we just leave it to the ice tower and the answer is just ice tower i think today's conversation when it comes to topic is going to be about seasons themselves what is your favorite season of the year Mine personally, I like autumn because summer is my least favorite season of year. I hate the heat and I hate it when all of the little insects are in your house, when you're trying to have a barbecue, lovely barbecues. Unfortunately, you get lots of wasps around your area and it's really, really annoying. That's why I hate summer because of both the heat and the insects. Insects are everywhere and my philosophy is that if it's too cold you can put a layer on but if it's too hot you cannot really take another layer off unless you want a criminal record okay we're gonna use snowstorm there speaking of seasons and winter i'd say is my second favorite although i'd say it's between winter and spring as my second favorite season you know i prefer that around the time of the year I prefer it when I'm wrapped up nice and warm. I've got lots of layers on in bed. It's also cozy and comfy. The fire is on downstairs. And where I'm on it, so where I'm at in the house, literally my room in which I'm recording in and where I sleep are both right next to the chimney of the house. So therefore, um, I always get the heat from it regardless. Also, by the way, we died on this round, which... Which is annoying, but because of these regrows, we're going to have to do a bit more timing with our snowstorm ability so that we catch them while within both the range of the ice tower and the Churchill. But these zebras are proving to be a little bit of a problem, which is annoying. But we dealt with the regrows now to do with the rest of these. Okay, round 40, we have ourselves this mo up here. So we've used the ability of both the snowstorm and the... Um, Oh gosh, we armor piercing shells so that we're able to get through this particular scenario better. There we go. Oh, some of them nearly made it to the exit there, but alas, we are all good. So about seasons. I love winter. I like autumn. Autumn is a beautiful time of the year. You see the red leaves on the trees. If you are living in an area where there is a tree, you get to see all the lovely red leaves on the tree. It's just such a lovely scene seeing red trees seeing the sunset in the sky reflecting as well with the red leaves or the brown leaves and stuff like that and everything just looks really beautiful not when they're falling down off the tree 
but when there's sun on the tree and they're all red it's lovely <laughs> speaking of autumn i'm recording this in autumn on the 25th of october 2023 in the northern hemisphere of planet earth we are getting the colder seasons and those in the southern hemisphere are getting the hotter seasons and i can only pray if i ever go to australia or somewhere incredibly hot in the summer season i i don't like hot at all i can't do hot like sometimes i have to skip out on a recording session because it's just too hot to try and record with the door closed like i have a window and i have a door but the room itself is quite small so therefore i'm not really able to try and record something if i feel like i'm recording in a furnace like not an actual furnace but the conditions themselves make the room feel like a furnace but then again the fire is not on so that's the only positive in the summer months is that the fire downstairs is not on the wood burner is not going actually what do you people have do you have a wood burner or do you have an electric fire like um i understand for, like people who um prim primarily don't have access to a lot of wood or is not uh that well off that getting a lot of wood is it's very costly like getting a lot of wood is incredibly costly sometimes but people say you do save money i also forgot we got absolute zero now but you do save money by having a wood burner than a uh, a electric fire or gas fire or anything like that but the initial cost i would say you will be spending more but long-term costs, you will be spending less. It's sort of like getting solar panels. You're always going to start out at a loss, but then you will gain a benefit as time goes on, providing that it is sunny. Okay, I'm going to use another absolute zero there so that those are popped. Because zebras, have you seen so far, have been our biggest proponent of blocking our attacks. Are the only thing that can really pop them is our machine gun. And I know I've already said that already, and I do apologize. The only thing benefit that I would say some of provides to me personally is the fact that you can get so much washing done. You have the most powerful and free heater in the entire world solar system at your disposal in order to help dry your clothes. And that is the big red blodge in the sky called the sun. And I know some of yours are such indoor hermits that you don't know what one of those are. Well, let me tell you, it is the brainer of life. See that big thing in the sky? That's the sun. What does the sun do? It brings heat. It also brings life. But do you know what it also provides? Photosynthesis. And what does photosynthesis do? Enable trees to produce oxygen so that we humans on this wee planet of ours can breathe. Because we do need oxygen. But pure oxygen, that is incredibly bad. But trees, they absorb carbon dioxide, they emit oxygen. And that's how we are still able to breathe in 2023. But then again, a year is something that we made up as people in order to try and designate a time or something along those lines. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not one for the time. I know what time it is. It's Slay Churchilling time. Round 60. We are just short of the Moab Barrage ability. But you know what? We'll get it for round 61. Or perhaps we could try and get it this round. I'm not just sure if the BFB provides enough money for us to be able to do this. Though, but let's see. Let's just keep using the Absolute Zero ability so that we can slow this thing down even more. With um armor piercing shell it also means that machine gun can also target and damage frozen balloons as well it's not just the shells that get the benefit it's also the bullets too let's see and we managed to get it on this round yeah let's just use it because i saw some zebras in there which are annoying that's kind of nice actually just having a frozen balloon on the screen just mind its own business ah regrows that's gonna be annoying like if you try, let's say round 79 is going to be a huge issue here, actually. If you enable enough regrows to happen, then we're just going to run out of pierce with both our absolute zero and our church hill here. Red balloons are such a joy, especially if they're like down here, because then you could just enable that time to, um, to get your abilities back. Okay, so this is a round we definitely need to use Moab Barrage. 
There we go. And they have gone down and dusted. Okay, let's absolutely zero that. But yeah, there's still these regrowers. Ooh. Yeah, we've done it. Good. Normally, round 63 is going to be a very hard round. But thanks to episode 0, we can stall these in their place. While Churchill, under the armor-piercing shell, can deliver justice upon all these balloons with his gifts. Being his cannon. But one thing I don't get about seasons nowadays. I get it when it was first introduced. It was daylight saving. It had a purpose so that... You can get an extra hour of, I think it is something related to farming and being able to get the crops in just that little bit sooner throughout the day. Essentially, in the winter seasons, obviously you get less sunlight. So therefore, you would need a bit more time for it to be sunny so that you're able to get the crops in and all that jazz. But also as well, as far as I've heard, like attacks were somewhat more prominent during the night time than the daytime, just because of the lack of lighting you have the night time to your advantage for a sneak attack surprise on your enemy there and all that jazz but it honestly what war has to teach us is the fact that we as people need to remember what has happened throughout wartime so all the people that we've lost, all the lessons that we have learned throughout history, you learn from it, but you never repeat it. Unfortunately for some people, history is something that is too enticing to repeat, just so that they can get their own flavor of what it was like to relive those quote-unquote glory days, or those golden days, or whatever kind of days that you um, entitle those as with the suffering of the masses of a lot of people and that is really sad like modern day stuff like what's going on throughout the world don't want to say it within the video itself but if you watch the news enough and you know what i'm getting at but it's really sad with what's happening throughout parts of the world parts of the world have always had like lots of war and unfortunately that is just the case because of what's happened throughout history has just made it so that certain parts of the world unfortunately are always under the constant fear of warfare and that's really sad and i wish for one day that we would live in a world free of warfare but i still think that we as a civilization as a species are incredibly far away until that kind of world is realized there are too many political differences throughout the world in order to actually try and make some kind of means of getting around to a table and just setting things peacefully. Diplomacy only works if any everybody is on board with it. And if even if it, even if it's just one person that's not on board, that means that that is a very bad thing for everybody else involved who wants to solve things peacefully. So that is round 66. Oh, I should have gotten that earlier, but you know what? We're fine with that. History is not something that we're all loving to learn about, and a lot of history is very dark and gory, but history is what sets the borders on the map. What you see on the globe, how the borders are formed of each country, a lot of the times throughout history, borders have changed, borders have had different names, borders have had different formations and sizes. So... Yes, history can be a particularly boring subject to some, but it is incredibly important. So many things that we have learned throughout history as a civilization, as people, because of what our predecessors have performed. And it's very important to take on board the fact that we should always never be, in a way, shameful of our country's history. So regardless of what country you are in, you should never be shameful of the things that your predecessors have done because primarily and solely you were not the one involved within that mass suffering or whatever that is and you should be proud of the country in which you are in regardless of what its state is in right now regardless of what country it is like there are lots of countries out there which are probably not very well perceived by other countries but some are more justified than others but 
Just because you're this nationality or this ethnicity does not mean that you agree with whatever it is that your government is saying. <laughs> We've switched from talking about the seasons to talking about just things that are happening around the world. And it's like, like, sometimes it's very important to discuss about things. Don't put your head in the sand and feel ashamed about talking it. Putting your head in the sand kind of philosophy is probably one of the worst things that you could do. Trying to pretend that something never happened means that, well, it never happened. So therefore, you would think what would happen if you performed this? If you wanted to because of uh, curiosity or any other motivation behind it. So it's always very important to learn about what happened throughout history and stuff like that. Like, what has your country done throughout its history? What has your neighbor's country done throughout its history? And what has certain countries um, undergone? Okay, this is going to be another failure here. As ugly as the news can be sometimes, it is very important to know what goes on throughout the world. Especially those who are very important to you and those who you feel that you can help in their time of need. Regardless of who it may be, it might be somebody from the other side of the world who might be struggling and just looking for somebody to talk to in a way. Going back to seasons, I think the perfect kind of temperature for me personally is for high teens or the low 20s. Enough for me to just have one layer on, but not hot enough to get shorts out. I prefer trousers over shorts all the way. I know it sounds a bit lame, like not having legs exposed and all that jazz, but I always prefer being as wrapped up as possible, having as many layers on as possible, and just feeling the warmth of your clothing on you, along with your body heat, also kind of having an effect on your clothing so that then your clothing can then reflect that heat back to you, all that kind of shenanigans. If you're a fan of summer, I understand why. It is a lovely time of the year just to be able to relax, for school kids, it's probably their favorite time of the year because, well, it's a month without school here in the UK. Essentially, like, late July to early September, kids are off school and all that jazz. So, for me as a retail worker, it can be a little bit annoying because we don't have the rush hours that we have in our store. And the time in which school kids, come, well, kids that come in are always random throughout the day rather than two different times number one when they leave sorry when they go to school and number two when they leave school because where i work at in my retail store we have a primary school which is literally right next to us so we always get two different rush hours for the day obviously there are other times where we get like an abnormal amount of customers in which is really nice because it always keeps us on our toes and i'm always busy i would say this to myself i would rather be busy than bored I'd rather not be standing around the cashier just not doing anything other than watching the TV, TV as in surveillance, looking out for what other customers do and all that jazz. Like, I prefer always being busy. I prefer serving people. I prefer putting stock away where that is either on the top of the store itself or downstairs for storage. It's it's something that I've always preferred to do. I don't like just standing there not doing anything. I feel like I'm wasting my time and I feel like I'm wasting everyone's time within the store itself. If I am not doing something throughout the store itself that is contributing towards both the store and the customers. Always you that anything that I do is symbiotic, benefiting both myself and those around me. Artillery barrage, thank you very much. Round 78, we've got a huge bunch of ceramics here, but this is a really powerful combo on this map, and probably only this map, and that's simply because the Absolute Zero slows down balloons, Churchill destroys them, and with the Absolute Zero ability, we can store them even when they're outside of the Absolute Zero's range, and our abilities come back that bit sooner because we have more time to wait around for the abilities to come back. Round 79, this is a big round here because all of these regrows are going to pose a really big threat to us if we enable them to continue to regrow. And honestly, at the moment, things are not looking too good because we have so many regrows.
Going to last was actually a miracle in itself. All I kept doing was targeting the regrowers and somehow was doing more damage to them. Rather than trying to chase them down here, we was able to fire shells going to the left. So our our miracle there was going last with our priority. <laughs> Grinch incoming. CMG going down nicely, which means it's now the beginning of free play rounds. So, my rabbits are going to get significantly uh, faster and take more hits as time goes on. Up to level 14 with Churcho at this given point in time. Let's wait for the fortified BFB to spawn up before using the ability. So that we're able to rain down presence upon these horrors at the very back here. And I've, yeah, the ability actually targets fortifiers before regulars. Even if the regulars are more in front of a track than the fortified ones are, which is nice. Targeting the strongest, most balloons. Armor um, piercing shell is very necessary if our bullets want to pop frozen and our shells want to pop blacks or zebras. Now we can do more damage against the fortified balloons, which is awesome because fortified balloons can be a big issue in their own ways with having more health technically or twice the resistance from attacks. I should have saved this video for Christmas actually, like in the December month. ZMG is going down very nicely, thank you very much. We're heading to the later game now, so mainly all of the commentary is going to be about the game. Round 86, a bunch of fortified BFBs. Let's wait for all of them to spawn out before using our barrage ability. And there we go. Take them all down and freeze them inside the range of Churchill so that we can maximize our attack potentials there. Okay, let's go to level 16, increase attack speed. Any attack speed increases, beloved and welcome. Round A7 is going down very nicely. All four ZMG stand no chance against this combo. Thank you very much. Although the Zebras keep somehow resisting our attacks at times, we have to really rely on the machine gun to pull up them. Okay, freeze them there. Use armor piercing shell there in order for them to able to be damaged by all of our attacks. Do the absolute zero again just because we can. And we'll go from there. Also, because of the fact we're applying permafrost, it means it slows down the mob class balloons as well as the regular balloons as well. Here we go, round 88 is being done and dusted. We are heading into the 90s very soon where we're going to get our first taste of the DDTs in the game. There we go. Okay, armor piercing. Not going to take any chances with this. Uh, with these last two, I'm going to freeze from there and do you what? That's ideal for getting our abilities back, so I'm not going to complain about that. Armor piercing, absolute zero again for all of these behemoths. We use that ability, although we could have used it for the DDTs as I'm thinking about it right now, but we're actually going to save the armor piercing shells for the DDTs because, well, Without armor piercing shells, we're not going to be able to do any damage against the DTs themselves. But then again, this is quite overwhelming here. Quite overwhelming. Okay, so let's slow. No, we're going to need to use it now. Let's just save a barrage for round 90, actually, since, well, we have it back now. Oh, this is a blessing. We have both of them back for round 90. That's bonus. Round 92, we have ourselves all of these to contend with. Sometimes the fastest balloons are the most deadly ones, not the strongest balloons. Let's see. Absolute zero, that again. Let us use the Moab Barrage ability, which is brilliant for delivering presence upon them all. There we go. Keep on going, keep on going, Churchill. Keep on going, absolute zero. You both can do it. You are both capable of doing this. You have been done. It has been recorded that this is a 2TC that is possible on this map. Armor piercing shells again. Uh, we we're going to say the barrage ability for the DDTs. There we go. Now let's do it. And they're all pops like that. So 
The next really, really tough round is going to be round 95 because we're going to rely on both abilities of Churchill's in order for us to actually get through the round itself. We need both abilities active and ready for round 95. Or mainly ready to be active for round 95. That's more accurate to say. Uh, oh, one of those nearly escaped there. How naughty of you balloons. I'm really hesitating to use the Moab Barrage ability because of how long it takes for it to come back. It takes a really long time for it to come back. And actually, we don't need it now, so that's all good. Well, 95. So this is going to take a bit of timing because we really want to use these abilities as late as possible if we can. After zero first, and then armor piercing shell. And then barrage after that. Yeah, barrage after that. But, oh no, oh no. Hold on. Absolute zero. And then armor piercing shot again. Yep, yeah, that was necessary. Oh, one DDD is all it takes to ruin the competition here. Ruin your appetite. Ruin everything, really. Okay, we're heading into the final stretches of the game here. The last five rounds. The most difficult five rounds. Keep on going. Keep on going. You can do it, you two. I believe in both of you. Wintry monkeys. There we go. Knock down those ZOMGs. Use the absolute zero to stall them in place while we do... The heavy lifting with Churchill and I should be leveling him up, but I haven't been doing so because of whatever reason I keep forgetting, mainly. Okay. 28,000. You should be able to get the seven times explosion on round 97. Let's use the absolute zero once they're in range again. Lovely. Always in range and not before range if you can. Uh, let's see now. Let's divide these up so that we can target these individuals. Individually. One ZOMG left. Can we take it down? Please? Do not want to do this round again? Thank you very much. ZOMG, I prefer... Oh. I prefer that ZOMG stay intact, but okay. I guess we're going to do this the hard way. And... Oh, I wish I had this ability ready for round 98, to be honest. Okay. Barrage. Mainly is going to affect the ZMGs, which is good. This is going to be the round that's going to decide if we're going to succeed or not. And I think with our ability timings, we are very good. It's just a matter of when we're going to use them throughout the round. They're both ready for this round. Well, the Barrage wasn't entirely ready for the round, but we are getting there. Keep stalling, Absolute Zero. You are a fantastic staller and slowing down of the balloons themselves. We just need to get through a final bit of a round. Can we do it? I believe we can do it. And that is fantastic. Let's just use that so that we can get our abilities back for round 99. And that is beautiful. Now then. Actually, let's just use the armor-piercing shells and see how far we get. And, uh, yeah, we're going to need to use the barrage ability. I really want it for around 100, but I guess that's not going to be the case. Okay, that's how it's taken care of. Can we try and store these balloons as long as possible? That would be quite handy, actually, if we can. Okay, yeah, let's store them as long as possible so we can get our abilities back. Come on. Oh, can we solve it? Damn it. Okay, but we are at level 20, which is brilliant. And somehow we instantly recovered our ability there, which is quite strange. Oh, maybe maybe getting level 20 reduces our Moab Barrage Shell's ability timing for its cooldown. And if that's the case, then that's brilliant, because that just instantly came back, which is nice. Keep on going. That bad has taken a severe toll so far. So toll. Use another barrage ability. Ooh, can we time it so that this is still within a range here? Okay, there we go. Use the absolute zero there. And is this victory? Or do we have to do this again because of how we popped everything here? Ooh. 
This is looking very tight at the moment. No, nope, we've done it. That is... Oh, look at that background, actually. That is a really cool background with these two particular towers involved here with the snow in the background. I didn't time that so we have this particular screen, honestly. It just sort of happened because of the current circumstances that we had there. So that was a really nice 2TC with these two particular towers. Like... I try to make this a two mega pops but obviously it's not going to be possible because we needed this too much in order to actually try and pop the black balloons in order for this to be able to properly then pop them after that because we can only rely on the machine gun for the black and zebras because the cannons can't do them otherwise because of the the, uh, the explosive immunity factor of the black balloons so that is a good 2TC Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everybody.